Greetings, everybody. Hey, uh, I thought since we're giving away a Baofeng radio on the channel that maybe I should go over the operation of it and talk about it just a little bit. Baofeng UV5R8W. This is the channel giveaway radio. This is one that I like to use when I'm train hopping. A lot of rail fans uh, use it as well. So let's uh, kind of check it out. This is just out of the box. I did attach the antenna and I also put the wrist strap on it. But we'll turn it on. And I'm sure you could hear that. It came up in uh, Chinese. So let's start with the menuing system on this because we're going to change that right off the bat. To get into the menu, you just press the menu button once. And then you can use the up and down arrows to scroll through, or you can use the numbering system. I'm going to put in number 14 because I know that's the voice. Then to change it, I'm going to hit menu one more time. And then I'm going to scroll through the options using the up and down arrow. And my options are Chinese, English, or off. So we're going to set that to English. And I push the menu button again to register that choice. So now we've got it set to be in English. Uh, one of the things that I, I like to have that light stay on longer. And so we're going to go fix that as well. Menu. So we're going to go to the number six option in the menu. And it's called ABR. I'm not sure what that stands for exactly. But we're going to run that up to 10, which is the highest value that uh, I can set it to. So we've set that to 10. Now that light will stay on at least a little longer. It still goes out too quickly, if you ask me. Uh, the other thing, there's one other thing that I want to uh, check on here, and that is to make sure that uh, it will listen on two channels. So if you can see the display here, there's a channel listed on top, a frequency list on top, and there's one listed on the bottom. They're referred to as the A and B channels. So uh, when I hit the A and B button here, it, there's a little arrow off to the left that indicates which frequency is the one that's being monitored and will transmit on if I were to push the transmit key. Uh, so I want to make sure there's one feature that I want to make sure is enabled. I want to make sure that it listens to both of those frequencies that are displayed there. So let's go back to the menu. Menu. And I'm going to find that option. I believe it's TDR. And it is already set to on. So I don't need to worry about that one. So that's referred to as dual standby. Uh, so we do want that one set to on. So what that does then... Menu. Dual standby. Whoops, we'll get out of the menu. There's an exit button over here on the side as well we can use. So what that means is that it's going to listen to the two frequencies displayed there. Now the radio has two different modes. It has a uh, frequency mode and a channel mode. Now, I prefer to use it in channel mode, and I'll explain why in a minute. But you can use it either way. But to change modes, frequency mode. you push this orange channel button mode. here. Frequency mode. And so let's say I want to put a new frequency down here in the bottom. I just enter my frequency. One, six, zero, one, two, five. And now I've put a new frequency in. If I want to change the other one, I hit the AB option, and then I would put the other frequency one, in here. Six, eight, three, zero, zero. And if you put a frequency in that it's not capable of doing, it just goes back to whatever was in there uh, to begin with. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to use this thing in channel mode. So in when it's in frequency mode, it will scan between the top frequency listed and the bottom frequency listed. And it doesn't scan as fast as like a real scanner, a dedicated scanner does. So 
uh, depending on how spaced out you had those two frequencies in the window there, it would take quite a while to scan through even once. So it's rare that you would use, uh, use it in frequency mode scanning. Now, if we go though to channel mode, channel mode, channel mode works differently. It has storage space for a hundred or so frequencies. And when you're in channel mode, it will only scan the channels. And so that's pretty handy. So in channel mode, I would put in and select uh, perhaps a road frequency for one of the channels I'm listening to and a yard frequency. And then the radio will listen to both of those. So what we're going to do is rather than enter, there's about 100, I think it's 97 uh, official rail channels from the uh, American Association of Railroads. And uh, we're going to go ahead and have the computer program those channels in so that we can listen to them. Uh, the railroad channels start, I think, their channels start at 2. But technically, most of the lower ones, like from 2 to 7, are used in Canada, I think. But anyway, to make a long story short, this radio, of course, can transmit as well as receive. So the way we're going to program it is I'm going to take the first two banks and we're going to program those to be family radio service frequencies. And those are frequencies you can legally talk on. And then we'll program the rest of the banks to be the railroad frequencies. And it will, because of the way we're storing them in the banks, channel two will be bank two. And in the radio terminology, they refer to that as channel two. But so if you want to put a, a channel in, you can select it just by putting in the numbers for it. So let's say once it's programmed, I want channel, uh, railroad channel six or something. I can just punch zero, 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 zero six, six, and it will change to that channel then. And I'm going to display the radio uh, channels in the, in the window here. So let's get this programmed up, and then we'll run through just a little bit more of it. Okay. I've already gone ahead and launched Chirp. This is a free software package available for uh, Windows or Mac or Linux. Uh, so I'll put a link in the description to their site so you can download and install that software. It's a little bit counterintuitive, but the first thing you have to do is get the data out of the radio, how it came out of the box. So you go to radio on the menu and go download from radio. I think it should be upload from radio, but anyway, we're going to download from the radio to the computer. So this little window pops up and lists the serial device and the vendor, etc., and the model. You tell it OK. And now it says cloning from radio. You have to do that before you can write to the radio which caused me a lot of problems. I thought I was having trouble with the connection and everything else. Turned out, once I learned that you had to read the radio into the software first and then write out, everything worked fine. So I've created a file that's got all the railroad channels already in it, as well as a couple of uh, family radio service channels that you can use to make these into walkie-talkie, so to speak. Because the railroad channels start at number two, channel two, we're going to put the the uh, family radio service frequencies in, in uh, memory location uh, zero and one. So channel zero and channel one. So here we go. Let's uh, open this file. And we're going to open. I got a list of files here. And I think it's... Uh, I think it's this one, the final. Let's see if that's the right image. Yeah, I believe that that is. So, okay, let's run through this file just a little bit. The first column is the frequency, then the name that I've given it. Okay, and so the name I've given it is what's going to show in the window when we've selected these channels. Then, uh, the tone mode, I set this to TSQL, which means 
that it's going to focus on the other radio. It's all, it's not going to let squelch be interrupted by random radios if you're in a crowded area. It's going to only work with radios that is sending this tone on 103.5. Anyway, it's FM mode and I've got it on low power. You can only legally uh, transmit at 2 watts on the family's uh, radio service. So we've automatically put that down to low. This duplex option here, I've set all of those to off. And when you turn off duplex, you cannot transmit on that frequency. And so you can't accidentally key the radio or something and be blocking rail uh, transmissions. And like I say, uh, it's not legal to transmit on those frequencies. Although perhaps in an emergency, nobody would care. Uh, all right. so. That's the file, and I've got a link to that in the description so that you can download that. And now what we do is we go to the radio, and we're going to upload to the radio. So we just tell it OK, uh, and just acknowledge that with another OK. And now it's cloning our program to the radio. So when that's done, in our radio then, we can just put in the bank number, and you use three digits for the bank number. So if I want the uh, AAR channel 02, which the railroads would refer to that as channel 2, I'm going to punch in 002 while I'm in channel mode, and it's going to load that frequency into the radio just that simply. So all you have to do now is look online, and I'll put a couple sources uh, to where you can get different frequencies that pertain to radios. Everything is in here that gets used for the most part, including down here at the end, the end of train device. And that's kind of handy because some, some of the train devices do talk, and they'll do the brake test, and then you know things are getting ready to move. So that's that. The, the radio is now fully programmed and ready for use. Okay, so now that we are done programming, I can go ahead and remove the USB cable. This is a special programming cable. And like everything else, I'll put a link to it <laughs> in the description. But uh, it plugs into where the microphone uh earbud thing plugs in. So we'll just pull that out. It's a double, double prong cord. I'll close that little flap. I had left that open. All right, so we've got this programmed and it's now uh, ready for use. So let's turn it on. Channel mode. So it's in channel mode and this is what we're normally going to use uh, out doing some rail fanning or train hopping. And uh, now all I got to do is select which frequencies I want to use or which channel. So because it's in channel mode and the way I programmed it so that the American Association of Railroad channels are stored in these banks. So the, the bank zero is channel zero as far as the radio is concerned. But uh, so I just mapped it in that same way so that the railroad channels match the bank numbers. So if I want to bring up rail channel 31, let's say, I can go zero, three, one. And now that put it into the, uh, I don't know if that's A or B, which one switch really, but it put it into one of the banks. I'll switch to the other bank and I'm going to put in a different uh, rail zero, channel. Nine, zero. So now I've got two rail channel frequencies that I'm listening to. Uh, channel 90 and channel 31 have no idea what those where those are used but that's how simple it is so all you have to do is use some of the online resources to find out what uh, railroad channels are being used in your area and you can either work with the frequency directly put it in frequency mode and punch in the frequency you want or go ahead and just use the channel based on this programming that we did. So all the links and everything will be in the description and in the next video I'm going to go do some investigating 
and we'll go ahead and use this scanner in Chicago. Anyway, take care, everybody. Hope this made, made some sense, and links will be in the description for all kinds of stuff related to this. Anyway, thanks. Bye-bye.